RTX for our 10 year anniversary 500th episode. Yes, so it's been a long time coming. It's been a, a long and daunting process to get here. And joining me up on the panel today, I have the original founder and the original host of the show, Fumo Jive himself. What's up, guys? So, thank you for coming out to, to RTX for this. And then we also have the original co-host himself, Mr. Spellcheck, or Splee Cheeks, or however you want to say his name. It's not Splee Cheeks, it's Spellcheck. (laughs) There's a little joke behind it. (laughs) So, these are our names. Uh, As far as who is up here, uh, we have quite a bit of uh, a different perspective on how Pottacular has been in the past, and kind of different realms of Halo. I know for myself, I definitely got on board when... These two fine gentlemen were taking the microphones and putting it out every week, and then uh, Biowolf's a recent addition to the podcast. Uh, I also want to give out a shout-out to a couple more people who are here. Uh, first off is Captain Crunk. He was the original webmaster for the Podtacular site, so give it up for him. And then I also have with me my current staff, uh, Haas Sauce. He is my community manager for Podtacular. <laughs> and then we have our event coordinator, Godzilla T. Also up here in the front. So like I said before, this is our 500th episode. Yes, we did have to add episodes to get to 500 for this specifically. But, uh, they were legitimate. They were legitimate, <laughs> yes. Uh, we did actually have some good conversations in the last few podcasts that we did. So it was great getting here. It's very fortunate that we have 500 on 10 years. I remember when I did episode 200 on four years, and that was a big deal. And that was actually uh, a pretty significant milestone uh, for the podcast. And for me at that point, it was uh, going for a few years on, on Podtacular. And to be here for 10 years is pretty amazing. Um, I've been through a lot. I know uh, Fumo Jive and Spellcheck have had a lot of interaction with Bungie back in the day whenever they had control of the podcast, and now we have the same kind of um, interactions with 343 and the same kind of relationship, so it's been been really cool. Uh, I am going to start this off a little differently. We're going to do a little trivia, so this is going to be a, a little uh, chance for some people to get some swag. So if, if you, I guess, judging from the few people in the back who actually have been around Pottacular a while, they may know some of this, some other people may not, but we're going to go uh, give away some stuff to start off with, and then we'll kind of dive into the history of Podtacular and how Halo has evolved as as we've evolved as a podcast. So first things first. When was the catchphrase, keep on fragging trucks, first said in a podcast? And granted, we've done 500 episodes, so first start person, counting down. First discover. person to, Not 500. to raise their hand and get the right answer. We'll take like the first three people to raise their hand. So I mean, it, if you want to just take a random guess, go for it. There's, there's. I have a box full of prizes out here. So raise your hand, and then. Okay, we have 84, 50, 77. <laughs> um, you can come up here, by the way. 
That's my. I'm gonna point him out because he's being he's being an outcast. That's my brother, by the way, <laughs> in the back. So come on, no, come on up, come on. Come on, on give, down. Give him the the next to my brother. On he, your he, answer was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come sit down. That works. <laughs> uh, I'll take a couple more. Sixteen. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the folks from Drunken Halo, by the way. Forty. Forty. Okay. So I'm, I'm taking the the closest. closest to it because they're all pretty off. Um, the episode number is actually 21. So he just said 23. I didn't hear that. You didn't raise your hand. I mean, you didn't raise your hand. hand. Oh. It's a violation of the contract. He rose his hand, so you you get you get a prize. I have to say, Simon <laughs> says. <laughs> He's uh, picking something. Give me one of these. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice. <laughs> By the way, when I first got those, I didn't know they had rec packs in them. But two of the new Mega Block sets have rec packs in them. So and they're out now. So go get some. And I play with it now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Next piece of trivia, and this one should be a little bit easier to get. When was Fumo Jive's last episode as host of Pottacular? Does, does Fumo know this? Start raising hands, people. Take a guess. 300? 400? 175? 150? 375? 200? 210. Come, come on in, guys. We're one dollar, Bob. Here. One dollar. <laughs> all right, that, that's all I'm going to take. That's all I'm going to take. Closest was 150. The correct answer was 158. That was the last episode that Fumo Jive hosted. It was a two-parter as well. So congratulations. Sweet. Nice little Halo drummer for you. Quality swag over there, by the way. Yeah, there's some nice swag some back here. Swag. Yeah. There's going to be more swag at our party tonight, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, let's see. I got a couple more. When was the first episode we ever live streamed? <laughs> 300? Okay. 315? 316. Raise your hand, dude. <laughs> Ooh. 316. Ooh, the price is wrong. <laughs> Sorry? 275? Hmm. 360? 270. 270. All right. I feel like I'm at an auction. <laughs> Did you write down what they said, Des? <laughs> I got a few that were close. I'm kind of scratching my head. I think there was actually two people that were closest. So I'm going to take... Um, you can re-raise your hands, but I'm going to go for it again. It, it is between 300 and 100. So go ahead and raise hands again. 100. 217. 250. 213. 90. 190 is the closest. Our 200th episode. <laughs> our four-year anniversary was our first live-streamed episode. Do you have a set of Astros? Do you have a set of Astros? No? Okay. Uh, I can give you some speaker tags, but go ahead and do that. A certain, for, certain affinity journal. Yeah. That's all right. All right. Last question. This one's gonna. I gotta make sure I don't give away too much on this one. <laughs> um. All right. Oh, I'm gonna take the question. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little easier on me. How long have I been doing the podcast? To the month. Ooh. <laughs> To the month. To the month. Yes. 84. Okay. I, I gotta do math. I know it in, it's it's year in. Okay, I'll do the math. <laughs> I mean, like cumulative months, not not the actual month name. <laughs> Break that down in years and months for me, and then I'll I'll take it. 50 months. That would be. Four, okay, four years, two months. Yeah. Yeah. 
You really want to make me do math, I think don't he's you? looking for how many years plus months. I got numbers, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, years plus months. Make it easy on me. Okay. Okay. All right. Years... <laughs> <laughs> years and months, dude. Okay. Six years even? All right. Okay. Gonna take two more. Eight years, two months. Okay. Jack's in the courtyard. Someone said seven years and three months. I believe that was you. Six years and ten months is how long I've been doing Potacular. Close. October 20, 2008. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Sweet. All right. So thanks for playing along, everybody. Cool. There's a little pod tackler trivia for you. It's coming apart up here. It's breaking stuff. <laughs> eh, a little bit. All right. So. I want to kind of take a little opportunity to go through some of the history because I know there's quite a few people in here who have haven't really known where the Podtacular origins have come from. Uh, who? Let me ask this first: Who listens to the podcast on a regular basis? Downloads it from iTunes, goes to the websites and listens to it. Who doesn't know what Podtacular is and is just showing up because it's a ten-year Halo thing? <laughs> All right. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so Podtacular was started by Fumo back in 2005, July 28th, 2005. To be specific. <laughs> Did you Did remember you that? Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> There's these little halo tidbits of Pataclar that I remember is like I can never get out of my head. <laughs> it's like it's I felt like amazing. I had to know I had to prove myself before I took on the responsibility of owning Pataclar. Well, you uh met the point of being detail oriented, so thank you. That's good, I suppose. <laughs> so I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Fumo and Spellcheck and have them kind of go through how Pataclar started. Um, what was the idea behind doing a Halo podcast and, and why you wanted to, to do it? Sure. So go ahead and start there. Right on. Uh, well, I started Podtacular um, because I was listening to a lot of podcasts on the time and had a long commute, and I kind of wanted to give back, and I figured it was easy enough to set up a podcast and do it. So it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. So I um, was kind of thinking of like different topics to do, and Halo was – I was playing a lot of Halo 2 at the time, a lot of big team battle, and just really enjoyed it and um, you know thought that – it would be cool if there was a podcast that kind of talked about how to improve in Halo and um, different strategies, different uh, you know ways to do better. So, uh, so uh, I finally decided to start that and um, you know set up all this stuff, set up websites, and was like emailing every Halo community I could find about like this new podcast that I'm doing and everything. So it kind of started out with just kind of some random observations about. Uh, uh, about uh, Halo strategies that, that I could find, even though I pretty much suck at Halo <laughs> and still do. <laughs> but um, but it was it was fun, and um, it was just me alone at the time. And then I kind of, on the website, it started to pick up some traction, and then I put out the, the call on the site for a co-host and on the podcast, I think. Yep. Yeah, and uh, uh, Cody here, Spellcheck. Yep. Uh, Responded to that. Well, actually, I responded for a, for a different way first. You may remember. <laughs> Do you remember that? No, and I, I left don't. a comment that wasn't nice. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, I said that there was like a loud ceiling fan or something in like the background of the first episode, and then like I sent you an email saying, "Hey, I want to join." And then like, then like later, we, like we were like, "Yeah, we move forward." And you're like, "Yeah, that comment was that you that left that comment <laughs> on the site that said that the show sucks?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm sorry about that." <laughs> Like, I'm hoping to make it not suck. Yeah. <laughs> well, 2005 was, you know, that, that one of the big things about that year was that was the year that iTunes actually added podcasts directory to their, to the, the iTunes player. Uh, and they updated pod, uh, the, the iPod software so that it could support podcasts that built into, uh, to, into, um, into iTunes, iTunes 4.9, I think, is what we were looking at last night. Is the... We're on, like, what, 13 now? You know, and it still works great. You know, uh, it's, just, it's, it's only gotten talk. better. iTunes more reliable over time. Uh, but it, it, it made it so much easier to find podcasts. Podcasts certainly didn't didn't start in, in, in July 2005. Um, there actually was another Halo podcast, I think, even at the time. Like Halo 2 Talk, was it called? Something, uh... something like that? That's or was it? The They're not having an anniversary this year. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I I don't even I can't even remember how I found um, Potacular. There's like there was only one episode out when I found it. Um, 
but I sent, I sent this guy an email, said I was interested and I was a 16 year old, uh, a 16 year old, uh, on summer break from school and I was going to go back to school in like two weeks. Uh, but we, we figured it out and, uh, we, we made it work. So we started doing this and we started, uh, recording on weekends and just kind of talking about, um, I think we started going through, uh, going through maps one by one. And we were just kind of talking about maps and like different points of them. Eventually we were asking people to send stuff in and, uh, you know, give us your ideas and, and your strategies and everything. It turned out that was basically the whole point of the show from then on, pretty yeah. much, as, at least as far as, uh, we've done it, is that, um, is that pretty much every show we just put out a thing that said, Hey, send in your stuff for this episode. We're going to be talking about this. And like the whole rest of the show, we'd be reading stuff off and talking about it and joking about random stuff and it ended up being a whole lot of fun. So yeah, so we went through those, those maps originally and we were just like talking about like all the different, uh, uh, choke points and things that everybody mm-hmm. was pretty much experiencing. And I exhausted my like guidebook I had for Halo. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Nope, that's all the book. It's so, a lot of fun. The people, you know, were, were eager to contribute and send us stuff. And we had a voicemail number. Um, that was 206 888 Halo was the, yeah. was the number. And they would, if you called it, it would just send us a, like, a, like an audio file that we could play on the show. And we would, we would do that. And that's how we got to meet some interesting characters in the Halo community. Um, some people that did get really involved with the show. We, we had some, uh, it was JVB did some Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions. Yes. It was like his yes, first appearance of the show. And yeah. we're like, this guy's awesome. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta connect with him. So it was, it was, our, the, we opened the door a little bit. We said, Hey, if you have MP3s of, you know, you talking of stuff, like, yeah, email us MP3s and we'll see what we, we, we went from there. Yeah. yeah. That and a lot of like sound effects and audio clips from the original game that I was like, you know what? This makes the show less boring than two guys talking the whole time. So let's, <laughs> Let's liven this up with some uh, sounds of a grunt dying. <laughs> sounds like an actual production, <laughs> kind of. Um, yeah, I remember like JVB, the homicide sauce, which I wanted to turn into a cert- shirt eventually because there it's was that hot. picture <laughs> that came up. Yeah, there was. That's that's kind of an example of how the community really stepped up, and it was it was even though like I started just myself in front of my mic, that was that was very short lived, and very shortly after that, it was it was really a huge team effort where everybody was just working together to make some awesome stuff and have fun and play Halo. So that was very cool. In fact, uh, part of that was that uh, we started on uh, Blogger and. Uh, so other things like eventually, uh, Libsyn and stuff like that. But, yeah. but for the website anyway, there was, there was a lot of interaction going on on the website on Blogger and, and that was really kind of limit our capability to, to kind of deal with all that. So, um, so fortunately we had another guy, uh, come forward and that was Captain Crunk over here, uh, to help us out and, uh, really hook it up on, on a new site that was, that was really fantastic. And we had a, a pretty big community going for, mm-hmm. for quite a while for several years. So, um, that was, that was really great and it was a huge help and it was absolutely uh, foundational to making all that happen. So, um, so that was a big, big help. He also had, uh, at least I think one or two different segments that he did on the show, uh, where he would, uh, oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. The yeah, voicemails. Yeah. yeah. He would like play him back and like say stuff about him and stuff. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. There's some crazy voicemails we got, man. <laughs> and we would usually do about all of them. There, there, sometimes someone would just like call it as a wrong number. Uh, cause it was just like a, like a phone number. Did you have like a few like, was, like uh, law agencies? Yeah. Like yeah. call in. <laughs> like, and we would just play him and talk person? over him. Like, what are you doing? What are you calling us? I think it was kind of the crazier, the better, really. Yeah. <laughs> those, were the best, those were the best ones we got. Like, screw the tips. It was when people had the wrong number. <laughs> So yeah. a lot of that stuff is just kind of those, like, where does this even come from? How do you even get this number? It's not even a real, like, phone number. I know, right? And it's the whole thing, like, you're calling Podtack and leave us a message. And they're like, hey, we have some aluminum siding we want to sell you or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, bit, that's, but... why, that's, that's why I'm the man I am today. Is I'm the aluminum <laughs> siding king of northeastern Oklahoma. <laughs> So Podtacular began in a period that was really prevalent in Halo 2. Granted, um, Halo 2 came out in 2004, podcast started in the middle of 2005, so you have the whole like developing community around Halo Online. So a big part of that was the whole clan system, RIP clan system. But um, <laughs> RIP. That was a big thing with Podtacular and doing all the clan matches and eventually led to the Bungie Hump Day challenges, 
being able to participate in that. So how was the community like back then when you had that whole clan system? And take take note that we had nine different Halo 2 clans. Yeah. We had six that rec clans, two pro clans, and an all-star clan. They weren't full, but we had nine, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we had this, we had this, first of all, we, we really wanted to like, as a team, we really wanted to bring everybody together to just have fun and play Halo. I mean, that was kind of the whole point, you know. Obviously, there's people that are more competitive about it than others, or there's people that are more into the podcast than others. There's people on all different angles of everything, and that's fine. Everybody can go to their part they're into. So along those same lines, we really wanted to, um, to use the clan system to have something that we can all kind of join together and have fun with on that too. So, we ended up like this kind of evolved to a point. First, we just had the Podtacular clan, and it was just kind of like friends of the show. And then that filled up because, you know, you got the 100 uh, person limit on Halo 2. Yep. Did. And uh, so that filled up. And then uh, somewhere be beyond there is when we came up with this idea where we got it to, uh, we decided we'd have the um, several levels of clans. Uh, we started to get people that were ticked that the, the clan level was too low because you got these filthy casuals that are playing poorly and. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Yeah, I'm sure I brought it to, down to them. I was filthy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so a slight problem for them because they're like super into the clan level and everything. And it's like, well, not everybody wants to be competitive about it. So we ended up splitting into like a competitive clan and a cat, a. I forget. Rec, clan. Rec, rec clan, rec right? Clans, recreational yeah. clan. Which there was uh, still some competition between the rec clans. <laughs> yeah, so it never really like. I remember you guys talking about like rec E and rec F like all the time on the podcast. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. they're always like yeah at each other's throats and everything. Yeah, so like <laughs> we had uh, we had the recreational clan and then we had the um, let me see here we had the pro clans right. Yeah, there were two pro clans. Yeah, so and then an all star. Yeah, and then there was the all stars. So there was like these three levels, and if you wanted to, you could actually kind of like rise the ranks. You could start in a recreational clan, and if you, the idea was you have to try out for the um, uh, for the pros mm -hmm. uh, with a certain clan leader, because there were multiple. Uh, eventually, there were multiple ones of each of these clans. There were multiple recreation clans, multiple pro clans, and then there was always just one all star clan, which was not a clan per se, but it was really like a, a group that did like competitive stuff against other communities against yeah. Bungie and things like that. So, um, you know, it's, it was like a cool idea, but like when you throw people into it, it kind of messes <laughs> everything up. <laughs> so, um, so it's that's, human nature, you know, at least it didn't get too complex. That's, that's really the good part. You know, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was maybe too complex. Uh, especially when we, uh, we, um, we were like, okay, this is working good, but like we're getting these, we want to like have this thing where the the clans have like this friendly rivalry going on between each other. So why don't we, even though we don't have enough people, why don't we split it up into like five or six clans? Yeah. And then they can have like these clan battles against each other and all this stuff. And that that didn't turn out as well as we thought because like next thing you know, we have we, now we need like five or six people that we can absolutely depend on to stick around and to not screw anything up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which are two major things. That didn't really happen. <laughs> so, there were um, moments, though. But they, there was, there was a lot of fun times, and um, and like they, um, I know with the with the Rec Clan, I think I was, I don't know if there was still like a separation of the original Podtacker Clan or what, but I was, I was, uh, um, I had a lot of uh, friends on the Rec Clan, and I would do. Um, I know I would do like these big parties once in a while, and just like uh, invite all friends because. It's one thing I miss about Halo is just that <laughs> why button to just invite everyone, you know. Uh, so invite all nine friends, and, and like five minutes later, we had like 16 people with people messaging me like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, INV and everything. And but um, but it was a lot of fun because like we played a ton of great customs and everything too. So I mean, that's what I was more into. But there was definitely a lot of people that had uh, you know lots of good times with like the pro clans and like competing and stuff. And yeah, and uh, with the all stars too, and with the uh, hump day challenges with Bungie and all that as well. So that was really cool. It was one of those cool things to see, like whenever Dial Pex and G Lewis stepped up to really see that kind of actually stay there. They were probably the two, at least for me. I know there are a couple others, but for me, those two, and unfortunately they couldn't be here for this, but they really stepped up and, and tried to make the best of the clans. I think Dialpex was more of the, the all-stars, and then G. Lewis did one of the pro clans. So they really stepped up and, and really managed those pretty well. And then, of course, you had the Bungie Hump Day challenge, which you actually managed to, to play twice. The first time, you completely dominated, even though they were close games. 
Yeah, but, well, by you, you mean, like, the team, not me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you, I mean, you, you played. Anyone. You played with it. <laughs> yeah, I played, and I, you know, I managed to not drag everyone down, <laughs> um, at least not too far. But, um, but yeah, we, we, we had a lot of fun with that. It was, Bungie was always, uh, you know, really uh, helpful and, and uh, uh, had lots of um, support from them, which is great. So yeah, we had these these hump day challenges they used to do uh, on what was it the well hump day Wednesday kind of thing. Yeah, and, uh, every, like every month or so. Yeah, they would do. Uh... They would like they would like pick a Halo community mm-hmm. and yeah. they would uh, kind of send their best guys against our best guys and see what happens. Yeah. So man, yeah, I remember we had some a lot of fun on that. It was it was always tricky to get the who were getting in there and everything. But once we assembled our team and everything, we had some pretty awesome matches. I remember we had this one that was that. Uh, King the Hill on Beaver Creek. Yes. And, uh, it was, we won by one second. It was the most awesome thing ever because there's like, you know, explosions going off everywhere. There's rockets firing from the top. And yeah, it was crazy, but it was super fun. And that was, I believe, the fourth episode of Pod TV was the highlight of that. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah. Pod TV, so that was, that was another good old experiment. 320 by 240p back in the day <laughs> when capture cards were barely a thing. <laughs> uh, so, Another pretty cool part of Pottacular's history is when the community really came together and bought you a 360. Yeah. yeah. I was pretty shocked on that one. And I think that's kind of just a testament to how much community really is to Halo and how much Halo fosters that kind of community. So how how is it to kind of, I mean, I suppose like I think you were part of Oh yeah, I, I, well. I was I had exited the show at that point, but that that was certainly one of the things that you know, when I knew it was going on, I was like this is amazing. So how was it to kind of like work on that, but keep it a secret? Um, I mean, I wasn't a part of the show, so it was pretty easy to keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it, you know, there was people, I can't, I, it's been too long to, you know, I, I feel bad. I don't remember who, who really led that charge, but it was, it was well done. And I think PK was in there. JVB. Yeah. Uh, all the other staff at that the time, right. dial packs. Mm-hmm. Captain McCronk, I think, was part of that. So, yeah, I think that's just, again, that's a testament to how awesome the community is. That was crazy. I was like, uh, my wife came in and she's like, I got something for you. And I, yeah. I opened it and I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was on Halo 2 for, for longer than most while everyone had moved on. Yeah, <laughs> Halo 3 on the I was Xbox like, no, 360. I'm my Halo 2, I'm good. So... A little while afterwards, Halo 3 came out. You got Halo 3. Uh, you continued doing the show, uh, covering the campaign, the maps, and all that stuff. And then come mid-2008, you guys decided to kind of step down, take care of your own life. So how, how did that come about? What was the, kind of the big changes that that kind of warranted you stepping down from the podcast? Let's see. Well, um, I think the biggest thing is is that... When when Halo, in two thousand five when we started the podcast, Halo Two was like the game, man. That's that's mm-hmm. all. If you're playing anything online, that's it. That's all you're playing. It was, that's it was one of the it. reasons people even had Xbox Live. I think yeah. a lot of people had kind of held off on Xbox Live until Halo Two because there was, <laughs> yeah, there was the a couple reason. different options, but yeah. it was kind of the game. And to, and and at that point, there wasn't uh, there wasn't <laughs> parties support across multiple games. It was kind of just Halo Two at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what was there? Uh, I don't know. There was some like Mech Warrior game, and yeah. I don't even know what else there there even was. Burnout. I think there might have been Rainbow Six Three. Yeah. Burnout. Or something. It, didn't, it, didn't, right. it didn't matter it was, because Halo Two was yeah, available. Exactly. Yeah, it was. The, it was. Why would you play anything else at that point? So, that was the game my, um, for life. My point is, like, by two thousand eight, that had changed, and now there's plenty of other games, and there's other things to kind of dilute the whole community and it kind of diluted me as well you know to where i wasn't like only into halo anymore so it i felt like i was doing a disservice to to all the fans to continue to to um do this podcast when i'm like not nearly as into halo as a lot of other people which brings me to the point (laughs) where uh i came across this guy and and he had been um he had been super helpful in the community doing all kinds of fun stuff. Cause you know, like I said, it was a team effort and he was, he was part of that team big time. He did all kinds of cool stuff. Like he did a, um, uh, he did a guide to all the, uh, the, what was it? The, uh, 
What are those things again? The, oh, the Halo 3 terminals? The, 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 yeah, the terminals. Halo 3 terminals, He did yeah. a guide to all the terminals, like, before anyone else had done that, set it all up on a website and everything. And, and uh, I mean, it was a lot of work, man. It was, like, all the details about every single one of those. So it took we were a while to write all that down. <laughs> super impressed by his commitment on that whole thing. Um, yeah, so uh, so beyond that, we, we talked about it a bit, and then Dust Storm took over, and I felt like, I've always said this, like, he's a bigger Halo fan than I ever was. So, and I think that's, that's important and, and that means a lot to, uh, to the community because everybody appreciates, you know, all the work you do and, and, yeah. uh, all the good stuff you do, man. Well, thanks for starting it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Um, but yeah, like, I, I guess it kind of transitions to me and I picked it up. I picked up the podcast around, I want to say, like, in the mid 50s. I think this was like, just so, so right after me, <laughs> like episode forty nine was my last show. <laughs> so it was something where I'd, I'd heard about Potacular before, and, and another podcast that was around at the time because I was mostly into Halo PC at the time was Sonic eighty four, the Halo PC podcast, hmm. and I'd heard about these two podcasts, and I decided uh, we, our family was going on a family vacation to Africa, so I I downloaded all the episodes that were available. And I, I think I listened through up to episode like 36 while I was there. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. So I'm, I'm going to catch up on the episodes, start to get involved with it, even though at the time our parents didn't let us have, have consoles or, or video game systems of that, of that nature. We had handhelds, but we couldn't have like an Xbox or Nintendo 64 or something like that. So I had friends that I could go over and play with. So I, I knew what Halo was. I played it a few times on like on local and a couple of times on on Xbox Live but I never really got into it until later on and and really Podtackle was kind of the avenue to to at least keep me interested until I could get my own copy of Halo and, and play it for myself so with kind of that evolving I I I knew of Halo I knew of ways to kind of get into it and like at least look up stuff online to be okay I can I can do this kind of stuff and then uh, 2007 rolls around with Halo 3. I buy myself my own 360 for Christmas, get Halo 3, and then I really start to to get plugged into the community, really start creating content and posting in the forums like crazy. <laughs> and from that point on, it was just something that it was, it was like a an online presence that I'd never really had before. This was kind of like my first big venue into gaming. Uh, before that, it was Pokemon on Game Boy. <laughs> it's pretty big, though. You know. It is. <laughs> it is. But that, that was going from like... Pokey-tacular. <laughs> Pokey-tacular. <Yeah. So, laughs> <laughs> Britt and I had... Can uh, full, full of Pokemon at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Britt and I had always talked about doing like a Goldenrod Radio type show hmm. for for a while. Hmm. Back, I think, like, I think we talked about it. Like at least once every six months for a good two or three years. It's like we we'd always bring a Pokemon in some way or form in the podcast when we were both hosting it together. So <laughs> we just made this joke of someday we're just gonna do a Pokemon podcast. Whether it be like a month or whatever, we'll call it Golden Ride Radio because why not? <laughs> because it's a podcast about Halo currently, that's why that's why that's why not. <laughs> Slight problem. Yeah. April um, Fools. <laughs> <laughs> We actually tried uh, a few times to do some to kind of branch out and do some different stuff. I know G Lewis was always like, "Man, you guys, you know, it's so successful with, with Halo. Why don't you just make it about all games?" And and we were always like, "Well, it's maybe I don't know." But the thing is, that's why. But what makes it successful, what people like about it, is about Halo. You know? Yeah. So, well, um, there was a little while between the Halo Two and the Halo Three launch that you guys were actually talking about some other games. Like yeah, we, it kind of turned into a little bit of an Xbox podcast for yeah. a few months and then when Halo 3 came out it's like all oh, Halo 3 content. Yeah, there there kind of came to a point where we were kind of saturating what we could talk about anyway. So, where we could either go through all the maps again because we had already gone through all of them including all the <laughs> yeah, DLCs exactly. and, some of them yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but it was like let's take another closer look at this map. <laughs> let's let's, uh, let's really find the details. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I remember we had a Viva Pinata podcast, and it was and like cares, yeah. it was a big yeah. joke. We're like, <laughs> "Yep, Fontacular Viva Pinata Spectacular Special." Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, she like, didn't make it to the the Barbie horse game. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you were so close. Your <laughs> strategies for the this yeah. horse map here. <laughs> oh boy. 
<laughs> and then there was, I think there was a, a Gears one because that was a new, brand new IP for Xbox. Yeah. And then a few other ones. But another interesting tidbit is Major Nelson has actually been on the podcast. Yeah. Podcast before episode number eight. Major yeah. Nelson was actually on the show. So how was that to have someone as bigwig as Major Nelson from Xbox of all places on the podcast after two months? It for- was it was really exciting to have him on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> it was it was a really weird podcast. Like if you listen <laughs> yeah. to it, it's like it's <laughs> it's basically like him going like, uh, so tell me about the podcast. Tell me how you how everything started. And it was just like this this for about 10 15 minutes it was like this meta discussion about uh where we weren't even talking about halo anymore we were just talking about the podcast which talks about halo and it was yeah uh, once we realized that this was going on it was kind of embarrassing really <laughs> so uh unfortunately we kind of realized it too late because he was like okay well it's about that time i gotta go you guys so <laughs> i'll catch you later this but is about it, you know listening to it now i actually went back and listened to it not too long ago because like oh yeah there was that time that we interviewed mr <laughs> nelson <laughs> Um, he had certainly been a member of the Xbox community and it was someone that like, that was a name that like, I think some people who were really active may knew, uh, may have known. Um, I, you might see him in like a, a promotional video for Xbox live back then. Um, but this was before the launch of the 360 and we had some real questions about the 360 and, and the changes coming to Xbox live. And he, told us some things and explained them in ways that I think that we we had already heard that, but we w- weren't quite sure what it meant. I can't think of the details. I think we had some questions about, about the party system that was proposed. Um, there was also some concerns about um, what were, you know, that was not too long after the initial ban hammer had come down. <laughs> um, you know, there were some serious problems with people, you know, doing kind of connection manipulation back then to cause you know, st- connection stuttering or to, you know, stand by on their router to, to create like a artificial like lag and stuff. It was, it was a bad time. And, and so we, we got to ask, ask him some questions about, about that. And just some of his answers were just very encouraging. And it, that was something that we, we kind of realized that we had a voice in the community that wasn't falling on deaf ears um, and that we had the ability to reach out and, and see that um, not only us as hosts, but members of our community, you know, our concerns were being listened to um, what you know, whether we were posting them on Bungie's forums, whether we were posting them on other sites, or whether we're just talking about it on our podcasts. So. <laughs> it was awesome. I jumped for joy when I found out we were doing it. Yeah. I really, I just like ran around my kitchen, like jumping for joy. <laughs> and then my computer well, broke. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to borrow That's a computer. Right. <laughs> the jumping and computer breaking were not related. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on the computer. Yeah. As long as, as, long as that. that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> so from, I guess we haven't really talked to, to you yet over here. Mm. Uh, you've been <laughs> around actually shortly after rtx last year it's actually going on this month yeah it'll be my first year yeah on, so Sweet. so tell cool. us a little bit about how you kind of found out about pop particular because i know like our first interaction was actually through this guy up here yeah dude, um, games cast. yeah <laughs> <laughs> how is that by the way <laughs> no anniversary for you <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it was actually really interesting how I found Podtacular. Um, I actually found it through a picture on Xbox Live. Um, I kind of looked it up, and I looked up online what Podtacular was. And uh, it was actually interesting because we I went through a couple ready of live guys, and Podtacular constantly popped up everywhere I was looking. So I ran into you on Xbox Live, and we kind of talked. And I've known Dust for, what, two years now? Three years? Somewhere around there? Uh, about a year and a half or so yes yeah but uh we just started talking and then i just started listening to the podcast more and more and more and i was like all right you know i listen to podcasts all the time you know between school high school that's when i was usually listening to when i was bored in class just threw them on um don't ever do that (laughs) don't ever do that in school but uh i was starting to listen to it and i just fell in love with the, the podcast like it was something that you guys were you guys were just basically talking about a subject that I play just about every single day, and I loved it. And uh, one day I made a tweet, and I was like, you know, it'd be awesome to be on a podcast. And then you kind of talked to me after RTX last year, and that's kind of how I just fell out. Everything kind of just had like a 
tumbling effect on how it kind of came to be. So it was interesting. It was an interesting way of coming on. It's been great ever since. I do want to give a, a shout to someone who should be here, but he's not here. Um, Brent Gamer, he actually held down the fort with the podcast for me for before he came on for like two, three years, and he's actually been uh, a big character in the podcast. He's been one of those people that was was really up for for doing the podcast. He had a, a great personality. Great radio voice too, even though he'll yeah. never admit it. He had probably the perfect great great face for radio, you know. <laughs> just, <laughs> just one of those great radio faces. Yeah. And just he had a just a a light personality on the microphone that really m- made Pod Tackler for me. Um before before that it was um G. Lewis who when I first got on, he was the one that was there to, to help me. We actually did the Podtacular community cast before picking up the podcast. It's like, yeah, the, the podcast about the podcast. Yeah, the podcast about the podcast. <laughs> so you can podcast while you podcast. Inception. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rooster Teeth has a few of those too, actually. Um, but it was just one of those things that I, I've had a good support from everyone that's that's been part of Podtacular. And even though, like, Definitely now, Potecular is not nearly as big, and I mean, in in, retro, in kind of the similar respects, Halo isn't as big right. in the whole gaming realm as as Potecular is in, in the Halo community because there's just a lot of different communities out there. There's lots of different places for people to get plugged into. So we're definitely a lot smaller than we are uh, than we were when you guys were doing it in, <laughs> in perspective. But it's still just one of those cool things where every every now and then I get that person that comes up and says, I, I love what you're doing. Keep on doing what you're doing. Well, we didn't have panels at conventions, so smaller. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Um, but that's, a, that's a good point, though. Just like um, Halo 2 filled a huge void back then of being the game that everyone played. Likewise, Podtacular filled a huge void to where it was the podcast about the game that everyone played. Yeah. And since then, and likewise, the community in the sense of... Um, of uh, to some extent of, of clans and forums and such, uh, and anything else anyone want to get involved in. But, um, but yeah, since then it's diluted a lot more, which is not a bad thing. It's just, uh, you know, a lot more just different. There's also yeah. a lot more gaming podcasts too than, yeah. than there was back then. Uh, I mean, it's kind of crazy to believe that you know, one Podtacular was at one time on the front page of the iTunes podcast yeah, we're in the top 20 page, podcasts. and we were in the top 20, like, that's ridiculous. Now, like the, the stuff that's in the top twenty, there's no way to ever get up that <laughs> no, high again. Definitely not. Unless you have like Ira Glass of This American Life on there as, like, <laughs> as, a, like, as a guest host on the podcast this week. Act, um, act one, Halo. <laughs> another another funny little uh, trivia bit, but Pod Tackler actually won the best gaming podcast award in 2006. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of a big milestone back then, and that was when from like, who? Particular? Did we award it to ourselves? Or? Podcast awards. Podcast, Podcast awards. awards. Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah, and they're still around too. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> they're still around. Um, yeah. Game Tag Radio is still around from from that era. The mm-hmm. whole GamerCast network thing. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, GCN. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's the only other podcast left from that network. I, th- I don't know if Sarcastic Gamer still around or it got consumed by another entity or something like that, but. Yeah, there's it's just us two left. No, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, I think it's just those two left, pretty much. Um, but yeah, so it's it's been definitely a bumpy ride. I know while I've been doing the podcast, we've had ups and downs. It's been um, really cool at times to see hundreds of thousands of downloads per show, and then you get a lull where you're down to like two thousand per show. <laughs> and it, those I mean, are the ones I'm on. I guess guest episodes. <laughs> oh, Cody's on this one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Brace for impact. Yeah. I know when Halo Four was was coming around. That's that's actually when we had a lot of hype building up for for our podcast, and we actually had a lot of attention. And then that fell flat <laughs> a lot <laughs> for for some specific reason. I don't know why, or multiple reasons. And then we did. I mean. You could see that the population in Halo 4 dove off, and then our podcast listeners dove off with it. So we, we definitely have, have felt the effects, but definitely with Halo 5 coming out here in, in three months? Three and a half months? So close. Something like that? Yeah, it's, it's close. 
Wow. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, 73 days. There we go. Hours and minutes. <laughs> Two and a half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Door prices are tonight. <laughs> but it's... I mean, it's it's still cool to see that there's there's aspects of the community that are still there, and then there's other communities that really appreciate it. And three four three, I mean, huge shout outs to them for even supplying some of the stuff that we've given away already, and they're super supportive of of what we do, even though we're one of the smaller communities out there. Um, it still gets a lot of re- name recognition, though. Like people know of Pod Tackler, but a lot of people don't know that it's still around, kind of thing. <laughs> but it's just really encouraging to to see that people are still like still appreciate the show and and even though we are small just it reaffirms that what we're doing matters so i have to give a, a huge shout out to you guys for even just starting it and and just really appreciate it i mean it's it's come to the point where it's like if he wanted to somehow come back and take the show i'd happily give it back to him i mean that's that's how much <laughs> i respect is that going to happen not likely. <laughs> like I said. Yes, it's mine forever. <laughs> like I said, uh, I feel like I would be doing it a disservice because you're more of a Halo fan than I ever was. And I think that, you know, that's, like I was saying, that's important because, because you, the, when people, just like when people were, um, like what you were talking about, Bio, when, when you were saying how this is stuff you play every day and you get, you hear people talk about it and you can like relate to it. Yeah. And I think that's how it was with Halo 2 when it was such a huge thing and it, people were playing it every day and you hear about these maps and you hear about all these little points and you're like, I know exactly where that is. I've had that same problem or something yep. like that. And it's, you know, it's, it's something that you can connect to. And I think that's the same thing with the show you guys are doing now is that, you know, as you're, you know, a lot of the, the background around it, a lot of the, um, the community around the whole thing, uh, that's that much more that people can connect to, which is great. And I have to say also that community has been a big part of why I'm still here because when I first picked up the podcast, other than just talking about some of the same stuff and, and picking up where you guys left off with doing the map tips and filling up the or going through the mailbox and whatnot, there was no one really for us to reach out to in, in terms of like promoting it um, or getting the word out except for people that had been on, on the podcast before. So people like Chris Burke from The Spartan Life or Jessica Shea from Hottie McBloggy. Those were the kinds of people that we could get back on the show and they would actually help get the word back out. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why Pottackler was able to resurface was because there is that sense of community there. And we support each other. We really kind of take to our own kin, even though we're a different community within the community. It's still one of those things that we, we share a bond in Halo. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the three or four dozen different communities that I've been able to to talk with. And that's one of the saving graces about this podcast. And one of the things I love about it is that I've been able to meet so many people. I've been able to go to events like this, like PAX, like MLG, like ESL, and so many different events. And it's it's been a really awesome experience. Um, as far as... Um, kind of the evolution of, of Halo. What what was it like for you guys going from the the big support that we had for Halo two when the podcast was there going into Halo three? Like how how was that kind of transition for you guys for both the podcast and your whole gaming gaming style? Well I, I left the show episode forty nine, so I actually wasn't around whenever it's we we tra- it transitioned to Halo three. Um, I, I was kind of like FUMO though. Like I wasn't going to be quick to get a 360. You know, it's, there, there was certainly a little expensive back then. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, I was in high school. It wasn't, you know, I didn't really have the, the means to just go out and just buy one at, at launch for sure. Um, but Halo 3, you know, like it's what I was saying. A lot of people got Xbox Live to play Halo 2. But by the time that, the, that Halo 3 launched, there was certainly more to play. Um, and it, it was kind of, uh, it, 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 we, I, I kind of felt like it peaked somehow, but I just knew that there was, st- Halo 3 was, was solid in many ways. I was very happy to play it, had some good time. You know, there was, you know, all the, all the things I was used to about it, like playing zombies, for, for instance, like that was <laughs> honor system. It required so much cooperation and like, oh, it's just, that's just a game type in Halo 3. And it, some somehow it lost a little charm. Tad, I can't, I can't put it any other way than that. 
you know, it's funny. It's like <laughs> people don't like change, man. Because yeah. like, because yeah. <laughs> like you know how you know how it is like now with with everybody that's that, like looked back and like, oh, Halo Four was the worst, and I hope Halo Five like goes back to its roots and everything. But Halo Three. That was the gold standard of Halos. <laughs> you know, nowadays, it's, you know, a lot of people are like, that was the ultimate Halo and everything. But back then, like, when the 360 came out and, and when uh, Halo 3 came out, people were, like, ticked about all these changes. And, you know, I mean, I was I was kind of like, it's it's just not worth it buying it when Halo 2 has still a lot of great stuff and it's still a lot of fun uh, for, for quite a while. And so I was kind of in that same boat. But it's kind of funny how that works, isn't it? You know, now it's everybody looks back with it with nostalgia, like in through rose-colored glasses, like Halo Three is the bomb. But, but uh, Griff Ball, but yeah, there is Griff Ball now. <laughs> yep. I will say we actually played a little bit of Halo Two Classic last night, so we had to walk down the nostalgia lane for what about three? Team Bubble Bath? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember Team Bubble Bath? Does any, anyone in the room no. know what Team Bubble no. Bath is? Oh, man. We call it Team Frame Rate for short. <laughs> <laughs> Go out into the ocean of Zanzibar. Nothing but needlers. Yeah. Team Frame Rate. With, uh, oh, walls and yep. stuff. Yep. Yeah. So for the sake of people listening at home after this downloads, the question was, where was our start in Halo? Like, what game that we started on? Yeah, um... Well, I guess I'll take that. Um, I started on Halo 1, and uh, I had played a lot on Xbox at home on just, of course, the campaign. But um, at the time, I was working my way through school, and I was waiting tables. So uh, at the restaurant, I was, like, trying to get all these people all hyped together to have, like, these LAN parties and stuff. And I was like, you guys, huge LAN party this weekend. You have to go. It's going to be so – there's going to be girls there. There's going to be beer there. It's going to be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> so – I was like drawing all these flyers and pasting them all the walls. I'm like, you have to go. It's going to be the greatest. And, yeah. and, um, so we, we did like, you know, these, these, um, multi TV setups with, uh, you know, 16 players on Sidewinder and, and it was just the greatest thing ever. And from there on, I was totally hooked on Halo. Definitely. Um, you know, especially with all the hype and getting into Halo 2 and, and it really lived up to the potential there. So yeah, that was me. System Link Halo 1 was, I think, the reason that everyone was, like, so happy and willing to, like, set up and do Xbox Live. Because that, that feeling of 16 people in, in the, a room that just isn't quite big enough <laughs> with TVs that definitely aren't big enough uh, playing, like, you know, Capture the Flag, un, you know, Unlimited Time on Sidewinder. And you're just like, ah, you're just like yelling across the room <laughs> when someone resets the flag or something happens. I mean, I, I, I had a next door neighbor that had an Xbox. I didn't have one at the time. He brought it over and we were like, yeah, we, we need an Xbox. So the next Christmas I got an Xbox. We were real excited and, and we just had a, a family in our neighborhood that loved hosting LAN parties, and so we'd go over and play it. And so then when X, when, when Halo Two launched, it was like time to ditch this dial up and get a <laughs> get a real <laughs> internet connection so that we can play Halo Two online. Fifty six K. Fifty six K. I always feel odd answering this question because for me, I got introduced to Halo before, but I didn't really get into Halo until. A much later time. So, through a couple of friends I had, I, I knew what Halo was, and I played it a few times. But it wasn't really until I got my own laptop in January of 2007, before I went to college, and then I bought myself my own copy of Halo CE for PC. So that was the first time I actually started. What? Hey, we weren't allowed. To, we weren't allowed to have game consoles, so it was the best I could do. <laughs> <laughs> it is a the mods bit. are awesome. Just, just was, so I, I remember you were talking about like some of the mods that you would play and stuff. Oh, they're so cool! Like this cool. crazy Wonderland going on. He was saying that they had this mod where you could uh, you could fly long swords, which are these, which were those yes. from Halo One. The ship that? at the end. You remember that map? There was like that massive ship. It was like triangular shaped, and I was like, "What? You could fly what? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. You could like dress up like Mickey Mouse in there and everything. Yeah, my brother and I, we would actually. There was a few maps on Halo CE that people made that you could do that, and we would. That'd be the map that he would want to play all the time. Is the map that had the mm. the uh, the longsword on it. So, but yeah, hey, the, the PC version had some enormous maps that are now part of Halo CE in uh, the Master Chief Collection. For better or worse. For better and for worse. <laughs> like, was it like there's like one that's like Jeffreyophobia? 
Yeah, yeah, gyrophobia. 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 Yeah, is it gyrophobia. Timberland? Is that the other one? Yeah, Timberland. Oh my gosh! Ice if fields. you ever get that in in in, uh, in big team, then oh. Godspeed and good luck. You're never going to score. <laughs> Pack a lunch to get to the other side. Exactly. Of the map. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen minutes is not enough time to score a flag on that. No. Nope. I wonder how many times those maps have been played at all in the Master Chief Collection. Well, whenever I see them, it's like, well, you can choose between like Team Slayer on Blood Gulch. Like King of the Hill on Gyrophobia, <laughs> or or it's like Oddball on uh, Boarding Action. So I pre- pretty much is always Slayer Pro on Blood or Team Slayer on Blood Gulch. I'm like, oh man, I want to play the cool maps. Yeah. So I guess I'll finish it off with me. We're saying I I got involved with Halo in January 2007 with PC edition of Halo. Then I got Halo 2 Vista going into college, and then I got on to Xbox Halo in the winter of 2007 on Halo 3. So that's how I got into it. I got in through Halo CE, and it wasn't multiplayer, to be honest. It was uh, Truth and Reconciliation that kind of I played the first time with. It was crazy. Like, I was sitting there shooting people with snipers that was so futuristic. And, like, I, th- I think, honestly, something that was really different was when the hunters dropped down from the ship. Yeah. It was the first time I oh, seen yeah. that, and I was like... Yeah. This is really cool. All right, so let's keep on going. So my friend made a bet. He'd give me his extra Xbox if I beat the game or that Truth and Reconciliation within an hour. I got it done in 45 minutes at, I think it was like eight years old or something like that. Wow. So, um, And then I, we started playing split screen uh, through Halo 2. And then a couple of years later, Halo 3 popped up. And I'm like, all right, let's see how this is all about. And then I got my 360 when I was, I don't even remember how old I was. I started playing that and started playing with people across the world and that was just a huge experience for me you know <laughs> talking to someone that was like in london about something that i'm just playing i didn't really have a clue about <laughs> so it was interesting it was a really unique experience and the story of halo is what really captured captured my attention because it was so different you know i always played ratchet and clank or these other you know playstation games and then i played this and i'm like where has this been like this is just something i've been wanting to play for like forever like this is there but um, hey, I started off at Halo CE and just moved on from there. So we're actually going to do a little bit of throwback here, and this will be another opportunity for people to get more stuff. But we had an old podcast segment when you guys were doing it, and we tried doing it a few times for us, but it got stagnant with little submissions. But we're going to do a little segment we call Tales from the Foxhole. Oh, good. Yeah, so I'm going to start with us up here, and then whoever has the microphone, Mr. Guardian, is <laughs> in the back. Uh, once he once he gets back, um, we're going to have an opportunity for people to to tell your most memorable uh, memory from Halo, and then we'll give away some stuff based on 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 that. So we'll start at the end with. Spell check. What's your most memorable Halo memory? That's um, not I, from last night. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, oddball on turf with the Fiesta. Uh, so, 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 someone lost that, uh, I believe. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can think of just like pieces of so many different ones, but the what stands out the most to me has to be playing Tower of Power um, mm. on uh, on Ascension. Um, just. The, uh, playing to, to, to 500 kills or 250 kills or whatever it who's, took. Who's played Tower of Power? Okay. <laughs> a couple people. Have you played Tower of Power? Tower of Power? The game type? We take it for granted that people... Yeah. yeah. Some people haven't played it. So the the, the, the tower in, the, in, in Ascension had uh, this uh, a turret at the top that was pretty easy to d- defend. And uh, it was just a matter of like one team would kind of take over this tower, and the other team would try to fight for. Because once you're up there and you have that turret, you're just mowing them down left and right, and you're playing to 250 kills, so it's going to take a while. But it was just just a lot of fun battling, having these like long. I I, I just really enjoyed any kind of any session, whether it was a big team battle or a long capture the flag, where there's like you know 12 or 16 people. We're gonna do this this game type and it's gonna take us probably an hour and a half <laughs> it was, uh, two, uh, and start too, two and hours so that. essentially i just i just really loved those games where it wasn't just like 15 minutes of like something it was we're gonna do this for a while and those were the best not those in zombie game types where i just i just enjoyed them the most cool fumo 
Uh, for me, um, later on after uh, they got me the 360 and everything, um, I got to go to the Halo 3. Well, I guess this was before the 360 then. I, I can't remember exactly, but I got to go to the, the Halo 3 launch event. Oh, nice. Uh, which was really great um, with JVB. So uh, so he and I went out there. We got to play Halo 3 before it launched uh, with a bunch of other community members. We got to meet a lot of people at, uh, at Microsoft, uh, which was really great. And uh, they were just they were just super nice to us. And uh, and um, we were uh, we went to there was this Best Buy in, in Washington there that we went out there and I guess uh, Bill Gates had come out to make an appearance and some football player that I don't know and <laughs> <laughs> which everybody else was like, oh, this guy. Um, but uh, there was a huge line wrapped around the building of people waiting uh, to get their first one at midnight and everything. And we came off this bus uh, from Microsoft and we all had like uh, arms full of uh, Halo shirts and all this stuff. And, it's funny. We walked off the bus and we're and we're just like kind of walking towards them. And they were just all like, "What's going on over here?" And then um, I think it was JVB is like, "Who wants some shirts?" And they were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so "We were like throwing shirts at the wall." It was really great. But um, but yeah, we we got to do that and um, and uh, we got a you know I got to to play some Halo later and just meet some great people and it was super awesome. Nice, definitely a huge highlight. My most memorable Halo moment actually happened very recently. Uh, not in-game, but I went to E3 this year, and a few people already know what the story is. But they had the HoloLens demo with Warzone, and I got to go into the, the HoloLens experience with LeVar Burton, the original guy that wore the visor from Star Trek. But don't Trek. take his word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> So that that's probably my most. <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then, um, so that's probably the coolest Halo experience. And I know that's not like in game, but that that was just one of those like, whoa! I'm actually like the guy that wore probably like the original Hololens if it actually existed. <laughs> I'm just doing a Hololens demo that's for Halo <laughs> at E3. So that that's probably my. My like ex experience that tops it all off right now. There's a lot of moments in me for me. Um, honestly, I think my favorite one was probably where we did a custom game that lasted for 12 hours. Whoa. Uh, it was crazy. Like the amount of people that kind of came in and out. Duquesne was in it. Uh, that was the first time I met you in it actually, uh, which was interesting. It was with you, Halo. Source, Green Skull, and... Was this after one of the Halo streams? Yeah. Okay. It was after one of the Halo streams, and it just kept going and going and going, and, like, the amount of stories that just connected everything was just crazy. And, then like, that's how I met everybody, honestly, was through that one game. And it was just awesome. Like, they, I also recall one moment in that whole stream where I got an overkill with a sniper, and it wasn't... It was ridiculous. Like, it bounced off everything and hit everything... The most inaccurate shot ever, and it caught an overkill with it. So that was, it was pretty awesome. But um, I think that 12-hour custom game lobby was probably my favorite moment. So does anyone else have a tale that they would like to tell? And remember, you do get swag if you answer. So, and say, and say your gamer tag for the folks on the podcast. Uh, too loud. So I, ha I have this memory when I was playing Halo 2. We have an argument all the time because I'm a Halo 2 fan. He was a Halo 3 fan. But uh, I, I was just got out of high school, and I was I was working at a school, uh, like a like a smaller school for my job part time. I was going to college, and they had this room that had this extra projector in it, and I saw it sitting there every day. So me and my friends, all every weekend, all we did is play Halo 2 for hours, right? I mean, I remember stories of Hang'em High and, you know, snipers only on Hang'em High and playing, I mean, for hours. But we went to this dude's house that we would every weekend. We used to take our TVs, and his every morning, you know, on Saturday, his mom would always wake up and be like, you guys get out of my house, you know, whatever. But this time, we decided to take everything off their walls 
and and I bring this projector <laughs> uh, from my job, and and we and we mounted up there, and we played for I don't know, we must have played for like sixteen hours. It was ridiculous, wow. and we played for you know, and obviously you know, whenever I first started, we did the land parties and stuff like that. You know, when Halo One was around, but like this was like the experience for me because I remember just putting this projector on this wall and us yelling at each other for hours playing Halo Two on Hang 'Em High. So that's my that's my big story. Awesome. Uh, anyone else want to? Yeah, go over here. Come on, come on up, and I'll give you, give you something. Hey, uh, so my story from uh, my, so I started with Halo Two, then I went back to Halo One, but actually my I guess surreal experience was with Halo Three when I was first introduced to the internet on Xbox Live. Uh, that's how I got into it, and it was on the map Construct where I met a couple of friends uh, because that was the first time I actually had a mic and I was able to talk to people. And it was pretty great, and uh, we we went on to add each other, and we just played a couple of uh, custom games, and it was pretty great. It was uh, it was a time when my parents were pretty weary of the internet. They were like, "Oh, don't talk to strangers, don't do this and that." But uh, I guess it was it was through the internet, but at the same time, it wasn't. It wasn't you know, it was through a console, and it was just it was fun, and that's how I more or less loosened up and uh, began talking to people, and I was just. Uh, you know, I didn't listen to my parents. So I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. cool. so, you that. yeah, you know, that's is. my fuck whole story. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead and come on up and remember. Right, gamer tag. So, yeah. Gamer tag. Gamer tag. Yeah. So my name's David. Uh, gamer tag on Xbox is N O L Z E R O. No zero. Um, PlayStation is N O L X E R O. Um, but I actually have two. Like, Halo 3 was, like, the first game. I used to play Halo 3 for, like, eight, nine hours a day, every single day. Because at the time, I was babysitting. So I would babysit uh. at home. <laughs> and I had my own kids. I would had my own kids, so I'd babysit with my kids. By the time it was, like, nap time and bedtime, wife was home, and I was Haloing it up. So uh, Halo 3 was actually the first one that actually made me make a terrible YouTube video that's still up. Um, it has. It's not terrible gameplay, it's just terribly edited. Like, it has, I mean, I have multiple extermination overkills. I have lots of awesome, like, snipe shots, you know, double head shots, stuff like that. Uh, but overall, the editing is just atrocious. <laughs> but uh, it's up there. You can find it. It's a Null Zero's first montage. Um, and then I guess the second one would be, there's one time me and this guy and a couple of other of our friends were on a standoff. And um, I'm always the guy that's aggressive and gets all the kills. I'm very, very aggressive on teams but in halo 3 i was a master warthog driver and we were able to like i had the warthog the entire time the only two kills we didn't get on the warthog was him sniping warthog with laser and getting the first two kills Which after was, that was an achievement right to get a double kill with the spark laser. right after right. that and free for all yeah, yeah. it was I me and my my gunner we I still don't have i got that one. 48 willmen in this game on standoff with a team that was legitimately trying to win. Like, they weren't just rolling over. Like, it was 48. I don't remember what we ended up. But we got 48 kills. They never took us off that Warthog. So those nice. are my best Halo moments. Nice. Remember, say your gamer tag. <laughs> testing, testing. Hi, my name is Ward. And, of course, my, my, uh, sorry. my, my gamer tag is... Wall AR-15, like all lowercase, W-A-L space, all caps, AR space 15, and PSN's like the same, but no spaces, and, and, uh, okay, have a little brain fart. <laughs> and I started, like, you know, started to play Halo back in 2007. Well, I first was introduced to Halo uh, way back when I, I was like, oh, I want to spend a night with, with my friend, with one of my friends to celebrate his 12th birthday, and I saw he and his other friends were like playing Halo 2, and I wasn't really into Halo. I was basically watching it, and then, and like weeks later, while we we're like you know outside during recess, they were always talking about Halo. Uh, then, <clears throat> then in summer of 2007, and like after the Fourth of July, I, I decided like like to invite my friend over, and then he brought his his Xbox in and Halo 2 over, and and I had no idea what I was doing, in but also I was just like get, starting to get into Halo a little bit, like yeah, same. And okay, mm, okay, and it just like got, got a little interesting. And then while everyone was asleep, I was like, 
messing around, like, you know, running around Ivory Tower, aimlessly having no idea what I was doing, and just, like, shooting, wasting a needle or, or, or ammunition and stuff. And then when Halo 3 came out, that's when her, or he, he got an Xbox 360, and I started, started playing it. I thought it was just getting more interesting, and then that's when I got got the first Halo game on PC because I didn't have an Xbox. But that's when and I really got into Halo, for sure, like, started playing through the campaign missions, and once I got into the second mission, I was, like, blown away by it, by just seeing the, the Halo ring just arching over your head in the, over the atmos- in the atmosphere and, and just gradually gotten better as I played through the sound cartographer mission and and my first encounter with the flood and then and then saying hey may I that that's when I decided oh well, get I want to get an Xbox 360 for Christmas back in 2007 along with Halo 3 and and that's where I started really getting to, to playing Halo with my friends a lot and and like every time we'd like you know spend the night at each other's houses and is we always like mostly he played all night I do mostly stayed up all night playing Halo 3's multiplayer and like messing around with the forge, playing zombies and all, all the other good stuff. Uh, and let's see. And just kept on doing that until like Halo Reach. That's when we kind of like, you know, part of ways a little bit because they're like, uh, A's a little bit. And then and when Halo 4 came around, that's when I just like started to become more involved with the community. And when I started watching in what, Halo followers videos and and Green Skulls and Duquesne's and shout out to Duquesne by the way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then and I was like watching their videos and just constantly like watching the news. It was then just like got gradually got more interesting. And then after Halo 4 launched, that's when I was like, hey, maybe I can start current news on it was on Halo 5 and create a Twitter account. And that's when I just felt like I got really got more involved with the community and what and which is what when I actually ran to Tie Boy and Biowolf. Wolf shout out to th- those two, and also with Duquesne, and, and, and other friends who, who enjoy playing Halo. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. 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 Thanks. Yeah, there's definitely lots of, I think we can attest to the whole friend thing, being able to just, like, get on get online and, and just, like you said, send a message to all friends, like, let's play Halo. Yeah. Yep. All right. Wow. Um, it's that fun. <laughs> I'll take um, two more tales and then we'll have a little Q and A to to wrap it up. So, do you do you have one? Yes. Okay, so we'll we'll take so, you and then you two have quick ones. So my name is Ty Boy Seventeen, and my moment is when I got wrecked back in two thousand nine. <laughs> uh, like four months into playing Halo Three online. Scrub. <laughs> <laughs> then Bungie had their uh, Bungie vs the World on July seventh, two thousand nine. I believe it was like a Monday. So I'm playing and I'm playing and I'm trying to find them. I'm raging. And eventually, like at noon, I find them, you know, and um, playing through it. And I was I was 12 years old, so I screamed up, jumping up and down, <laughs> screaming like a little girl. And I wasn't talking to game chat with my um, teammates. So I'm playing and at the end of the match, we lost 50 to 36. I went 5 and 11. So, yeah, I was the bottom of the list in the whole entire match. So and I did not get recon, and my cousin got recon when they, <laughs> when they awarded it. And he did not uh, find Bungie, so he got recon, so I didn't because, yeah. So much hasn't changed then. Nope. Nope. I'm still and, a scrub. And just so you know, you can't have recon because everyone has recon. Yeah. So. Uh, I got the Vidmaster achievement, so. Okay. All right. Go to Ian real quick. And remember, you two come pick up stuff after afterwards. Uh, I'm a Zuju from uh, Reclaimer Hub. Also, yeah, quick plug. Uh, <laughs> uh, my favorite Halo moment was probably last RTX. 343 had this uh, play a pro. I don't remember you guys. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah that, was, exactly that, that was that was interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, me, me, and uh, Mix Austin over here. Uh, we went against Ghost Yami and Neighbor from 343. Uh, and uh, I know this is we lost horribly, but we we got twenty five to three, uh, which is pretty horrible. But we still be- did like second best of the entire weekend, which is still a good feeling. And we did better than the set of twins. I don't know if you guys know who they are, but I did hear about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you have a little interesting story from that too. I think, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just awesome, just like. Meeting the developers and all, meeting Austin 
uh, in real life for the first time. It was super. <laughs> it was a super <laughs> awesome experience. Uh, yeah. But yeah, cool. Halo's done a lot to, for my life. Awesome. But it's awesome. Yeah. All right, Justin, make it good. <laughs> Bring it home. <laughs> well, um, super quick. If we're talking about uh, one specific in-game moment, it was whenever I kind of accidentally. Uh, like truly mastered the uh, cla Vidmaster Classic uh, achievement, which, if you don't remember, is the one that you had to do in ODST on Legendary without firing a weapon. Uh, and everyone does it on the mission where you're in the Warthog uh, because, you know, you don't have to fire a weapon there. Uh, but you can't honk the horn. Don't honk the horn. Uh, <laughs> pro tip. Um, but uh, but um, my brother here, Travis, uh, and I were doing it, and... Uh, he, I watched him do it first, but uh, while he was playing, I was trying to look up online like any tips or whatever that would make it easier. And uh, Travis is by far a better player than me, but uh, he really wasn't doing very well. He was sucking pretty bad, actually. Uh, and he's throwing uh, you under the bus, dude. <laughs> I said, he, the I said right he's better than me normally, you know. Uh, but uh, but so uh, Travis finally gets it, and then I'm like looking up for my laptop, like, oh, what? You got to know? Okay. And so it's it's my turn, and I uh, I start and uh, like I die right off the bat, uh, trying to flip the word hog, and I'm like, oh great, this is gonna be a long night. Uh, if it took Travis that long, I don't know how long it's gonna take me. And so uh, I go for my uh, my second try, and um, I'm I'm through with the achievement, and I would say maybe five minutes at the most. However long it takes for you for you to like go through that map, if you know where you're going, which I didn't actually, which is another really cool thing, is it was just a lot of like guessing, like a you know, I think the circle's going to end up at the right. Don't go left. Uh, yeah, so uh, that my life's been pretty much downhill since then. <laughs> you know, I keep hoping uh, that there will be another moment where I can I can ace something like that as good as I did uh, the classic achievement, but uh, still waiting. Awesome. Still waiting. Reached All right. Summit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it turns up. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to open the floor up to Q&A. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left. So if anyone has any questions for any one of us, oh, then now is the time to ask it, whether it be Pontacular history, whether it be history specific to their time, whether it be Halo history while we've been doing the show, any, anything Halo-related is open. So... Okay, so David Null Zero again. Um, I have three questions. It's like rapid fire, really. Halo two or Halo three? Ooh, deuces. Two. Hold up, hold up your fingers. Two for the yeah, for ah. two for the. It's an audio podcast. We, we gotta say it. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, well, <laughs> listen to how many fingers I have holding up. Yeah. Why don't you tell me how many fingers you have holding up? Put your fingers up to the mic. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree. Oh. I strongly Fine disagree words. with the entire panel here. Uh, second question, any of y'all play wait, 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 wait. Or, Okay, so why do you disagree? Because I think Halo 2, this is the same argument I've had with him over and over again. <laughs> I think Halo 2... So he hasn't done his job on talking sense into you, basically. <laughs> no, no. Halo 2 showed the potential of Halo... Halo 3 mastered the potential of Halo. Okay, fair enough. That's how I feel. I just feel like I feel like they were in the right direction with Halo 2 and then Halo 3 just nailed it on every like just every, you know, aspect of the game. So, I'll say for me, the reason I pick Halo 2 over Halo 3 is because I can't aim for crap in Halo 3. <laughs> yeah, I can play much. really well in Halo 2. I'm great at Halo 2. And I I mean, I get like from a fundamentals and like a gameplay mechanic standpoint that yeah three definitely nailed a lot of the core mechanics of halo yeah i just had fun more with halo 2 than halo 3 okay that's fair so that's that's my reasoning well, I, I think it's because, because that's that's when we got that like real online experience right yeah. so for most people that played halo and, and, and played back then like that sticks in our minds so much because that was the first time we sat yeah. on our couch and we're like Holy crap. Like, I'm doing this in my own living room. I can do it at any time. I don't have to call people and tell them there's going to be girls and beer there because there's not anyways. <laughs> right, which is a lie. But now I can do it by myself, you know. And so nice. I, think, I think that's one reason why it sticks in our head. 
So what's um, your second question? Second question, Halo Wars fans? Did we play Halo Wars, and are we fans of it? I've played it. I'm definitely a fan of the story, and it, I'm not a great RTS person, so f- um, I do enjoy playing it, though. I might have four questions. Uh, one, the next question, I guess, at this point is, can I just drop the mic? <laughs> You're going to ask that Guardian Because the next thing was Halo Wars 2. Are, are we excited about that? Because, I mean... Oh, yeah. Looking forward to oh, it, yeah. yes. That yeah. actually was like, okay, I'm more excited to play that on my Xbox One than anything else after they announced that. So, uh-huh. Halo Wars, not so much. We eh. Well, especially with the, the, the talk that's come out, the saying that you know they're, they're evaluating keyboard and mouse support. You know, I don't want to play an RTS with a no. keyboard, so... I played tons of them. That's the experience of Halo Wars, so I hope they keep it to the controller. I, I, hope, it's, I hope that they have both. Make sure there's, I, have my I, th- I think there's going to be support. I mean, it's going to be controller, obviously, because it's the <coughs> Xbox. And coming to Windows 10, there's going to be uh, keyboard and mouse support. I think that decision on the Xbox is going to be more of a Microsoft decision. I, think, I don't see a decision. problem with it going both ways. Like, I don't see. It's not like a first person shooter where mouse and keyboard has an obvious advantage over the controller. Yeah. So there's no real debate there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I played a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle-earth 2 on Xbox 360 and really enjoyed that. Um, that was my favorite RTS on the 360. I also played um, uh, Command & Conquer 3, I think. Was it Command & Conquer or whatever it was called? The, the first one that came out on 360 anyway. Um, uh, I played the, through the whole campaign on that and really enjoyed it. Um, but I, I never felt like Halo Wars really clicked with me. It felt like it kind of dumbed down too many things, especially with the resources. Since you couldn't mine them, you just had to like be supplied uh, so I vertically. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the and I can see how it can appeal to some people, uh, but I was I was more used to it the other way, I guess. So I felt like there was more depth to it the other way. But I guess some people want more depth. Some people want more simplicity and streamlined. So that's where it kind of appealed. Anyway, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Moments. Real quick, did you miss podcasting after you left? So much, I do. And I actually, I I recently got back into podcasting. Um, I'm wearing a soccer jersey for the people that aren't 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 here. Um, <laughs> I actually occasionally appear on a on a soccer podcast now. So soccer podcast, wow. Or football. Yeah, it's kind of like Griff Ball, um, <laughs> but, no with, ha- no but with, with a lot less Griff. <laughs> a lot more less <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely more, definitely more flopping bodies for sure. That's that is definitely one thing that has appeared a lot more. I don't know. Have you seen those ragdoll physics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they added a lot of great ragdoll physics to the new FIFA. It's uh, <laughs> one of the key, one of the key features. We got one up here. Remind me to get you guys more stuff. Not like you have enough <clears throat> stuff already. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So I'm going to do my best and not make this sound like a plug for our stuff. Uh, so we we started Band. doing <laughs> we started doing Kicks our from stuff the party. with, <laughs> with uh, Reclaimer Radio back in June of last year of 2014. Um, but quickly moved over to doing a lot more video content, like with YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and that's when we blew up and expanded to the whole Reclaimer Hub thing. I was wondering why you guys never. I mean, obviously you stream and stuff like that. You guys do the Frag and Fridays, but was there never a decision to do more video content besides just the podcast and, and uh, the Twitch streams and stuff like that? So it is something that we've talked about, and it mostly comes down to the fact that we all have jobs. We all have real lives. We, we don't have time like a lot of other people that do YouTube videos where that's, that's a majority of their time. That, that's part of their lives is making YouTube content. It is something that I I would love love to do more of for Podtacular. Like, there's definitely stuff that I think we could do, resurrect some some like Podtacular series that we've done. Halo News was I that was my favorite thing that came out of Podtacular from a video format perspective was Halo News. Um which is kind of like a just a comedy satire fake news show. It was awesome. Some of the things, the people that do those things, you, you know, they kind of just do one or the other. There's not a whole lot of people who are doing podcasts and doing videos and doing large community events and doing streaming. It's so there's there's only so much bandwidth, you know, yeah. in, in the in the brain capacity of of Dust and the community to be able to handle all that. And I did say actually on 497 last week when we recorded that that after this we are actually going to open up to have people kind of apply to to help us out. And 
even without even putting the application process up yet, I've already had a few people come out and say we'd love to help uh, help out with with web content, with with writing articles, with possibly doing some video production. So I've definitely had ideas in my head, and that's one of those things where it's yeah project down the line whenever I have free time if it comes to that or if I can get someone else to, to step up to that so it's I mean for the most of us we all have our own roles and that's kind of the role that we currently can sustain but it's definitely something that we would like to do and as, as I mean as Halo 5 comes out there's going to be a demand for it so if we find someone that that's just totally awesome at doing it and just kind of picks it up for us and, and is more than willing to give us the content and, and less upload it, then yeah, we'll definitely do Halo video content. I think we're about out of time. Yeah. Um, there's a couple more things I want to do before we wrap up. Uh, first of all, we do have an anniversary party uh, sponsored by 343, Mega Bloks, Drunken Halo, RTX, and Griffball Hub. Um, they've uh, 343 and Megablox have provided some of the giveaway stuff that we have, and then Gripwell Hub and Drunken Halo, and uh, they provide some of the equipment that we're going to have at the party. So that's at the, the Moonshine Patio Barn Grill, for, which is just right across the street, across the east side of the convention. So you There'll can't be miss it. There's girls and beer there. Girls and beer. <laughs> there will be. There will be girls and beer. So, I promise. <laughs> um, One of them, maybe. For everyone, here at the, for everyone here at the panel, if I did not give you one of these already, come pick up a VIP pass. This gets you drink tickets, so you can actually have drinks at the party. <laughs> if you're of age, yes. If you're of age, if there is there is. That. If you're not of age, it gets me more drink tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and that is happening at 7:30 tonight. So if you have your schedule open, then please come by. Please just come hang out. Uh, it's just going to be a time for us to to celebrate us having 10 years. We are going to have four Xbox 360s with controllers to play Halo 2 Classic on yes. some nostalgic game types. Going to have a bubble bath. <laughs> we're going to do team bubble bath. We're going to do zombies. We're going to do yes. lava pit. We're going to do snipers. Whatever. Tower power. Oddball Fiesta. We have enough time to do time. <laughs> on turf. Oddball Fiesta on <laughs> turf. I do a little, yeah. little rematch from last night. AKA kill Fumo Drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I would. With I killed rockets. pretty much everybody with that. Yeah, yeah you you won pretty badly. And uh, I have to give a shout out to our Indiegogo supporters. We actually threw an Indiegogo campaign to kind of help fund a little bit of our anniversary party. Didn't do quite as well as I had hoped, but these are wonderful people for supporting it. Thank you and, guys so much. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, and especially for everyone that came out here to the panel, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I know we had some trickle out, so. Um, I, again, just thank you for the support and everything. And for those that have been around Podtacular for a while, um, we had someone send in a Podtacular theme song, and we asked him to do an anniversary song. So we're going to wrap up the panel with with that. So again, thanks to everyone for coming out. Really, really appreciate everyone being here, and then everyone that is download, downloading this later. My mouse is not working. Uh, uh, again, just the support has been incredible. It's been one of those really awesome things to do for the past almost seven years. And I'll be here for I don't know how much longer. Another and 10, right? We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how long it goes. I may, be, I may be passing it on to somebody after that. Halo 6 might be out by then. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I'm going to play this song for everybody. And then um, uh, for those that need to come get their swag, come on up. Everyone, once the panel's over, come by, grab one of each of these things in the pile, and then hopefully see you tonight. So this Where, is where's the event tonight? The moonshine. It's at, it's right, the, right there across. The yeah, someone was painted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's at the moonshine patio bar and grill just across the street. So thanks again, everyone, for for coming out. Really appreciate it.
watch a potacular Running for a decade while watching on Twitch It cools me off like lemonade Such a renegade, Halo is the game we play, uh Whether we are start to SMG It doesn't matter for a guy like me So blame Bio if you Halo lagging Potacular, keep on fragging What's BR starts?